kind of just realizing like, oh my god, <laughs> eight days. We might have we might have, we might have a long wait before that gets anywhere. Let's see. We're it's about time for us to sleep. And then tomorrow I've got to eat or something. My dice they reduce. Okay. Fungal growth. Wait, no, that's not where the seed is. The seed's up here. Yeah. So still five more days. Doop doop doo. -doo. And how's Bliss doing? Similar number of days. All right, so let's not check back for like three days. Instead, get busy on the flotilla objectives. So this is actually really handy that Flux is here because if the DLC wasn't here, I would be I would just be grinding for the next four days, just whatever I felt like, I guess. Reservoir S three. Have an edge alert. Havenage have installed a complex sensor array to monitor the reservoir. Trip this and the whole place will go into lockdown. <clears throat> Hack sensors. The reservoir is monitored by the, a web of sensors. Hacking them will reduce the alert system of the system and keep you from getting locked out. Oh. So this just reduces that. Okay. Siphon water. The only way to, for Esh to get enough water through is to siphon it directly from the station's reservoirs. Havenage will not be pleased. Water for the flotilla. Esh needs tanks and tanks of water if she hopes to help the flotilla. Anything else is worthless to her. So we need to fill this up by eight while well, getting that to not hit four. So I just go back and forth between these two objectives and I'm good at both of them, so that's good. Let's just dive in, I guess. Oh. Oh. Well, it's a good thing I got a plus two, but jeez. I was really hoping that I'd get a double effect for a good number. And that was not what happened. Okay, so water for the flotilla has applied. It's a pretty long time limit, so it's not that big of a deal. I was just thinking about like whether or not I should do the... um. Am I okay? Okay, now I just got a little alarmed. Where is... Where do food? Stabilizer is two of them things. And my stuff is still growing. Where do I... Have food. The commune. No. I'll just go back down here. Would you like more scrolling? This game's getting, the travel time is actually becoming a thing in this game. I was about to say it's becoming a consideration, but it doesn't affect gameplay, obviously. But there's just like, we are starting to have like travel time. It was like a little commute. Gonna burn through the next few days relatively quickly. Just trying to get to the next story content and trying to waste too much time on the minutiae of how the uh, steps are taken. Oh my god, these dice rolls. Yeah, so if I get a perfect roll, I don't actually ha alert Haven at all. And with my plus two, that's anything from that's half of the dice. A four, five, or a six are a perfect roll. So this is pretty good. I, I do wish time was going a little faster. And I can manufacture my own stabilizer now, so maybe I should take some stabilizer a little early. Just to further ensure I'm not wasting time here. Complete active sequences or scenes. I have to do a scene. Here, 
We still need to get scrap from the other place. I have one. Peak. Cautious spacer. Sleeper. Peak catches your attention from the shadowy corner they are leaned against. Any trouble getting up here? None. Good to hear. Come, take a look at this. They beckon you over to a nearby window, which looks across the ruined rig to the blinking red lights of the Havenage Cordon. The Cordon's temporary structures, a net of metal struts meant to detect and dissuade any ships from entering or leaving the flotilla, jut out into the black. And all around, the tugs flit, securing them in place and tending to the red blinking drones that demark the quarantine. It's an impressive and worrying sight. What do you think? Peek interrupts your thoughts. How would you get through? Let's see. Use one of the tugs. As an escort, you mean? I doubt we could fit all the supplies on one of those tugs. But if it seemed like Briar was officially escorting through the cordon... Peek squints at the red lights, but then we'd be stuck inside. Peek turns away from the window and rubs their forehead. Ash has really wrapped us up into something here, hasn't she? The question is spoken under their breath and they don't seem to expect an answer. The silence grows. Maybe we try all three. Peek laughs. I like it. At least we could prepare as many ways as we can. The way I see it, there are three parts to making it through the cordon. They gesture out the window at the strange structure. Deception, distraction, and speed. We'll need all of them to, for, for clean passage through. Deception means tricking the cordon security into thinking that we are meant to be, to be there. Maybe a tug escort would work. Anything that makes the briar look official. Distraction, meanwhile, will be all about diverting attention so that no one looks too hard at what the briar's doing. If we can create a gap in the cordon's scanning and deterrent systems, that should keep them busy. Finally, speed will mean making sure that the briar is ready to roll. Perhaps we can do a little work on the ship to get her ready. Ash surely wouldn't mind. They lean back from the window. How does that sound? Risky. Well, they smile. Yes, there's always going to be risk. That's how this works. You've got to be on board with that. Peek looks down at their slate. Ten cycles left. They glance out the window to the cordon nervously. Ten cycles to gather the supplies and prep this plan. It's tight. Very tight. Peek looks at you. If this goes wrong, Peek sighs. Just get out, okay? They squeeze her shoulder. I'll follow Esh anywhere. But you? You don't need to get dragged down with us. It won't come to that. Peek brightens up a little. Of course. But just keep it in mind. Let's get to it. Peek stretches. I'll tell Ash about the improvements to the briar. And the rest. Let's explore the cordon as best we can and look for openings. Peek smiles. I have no idea what guardian angel sent, sent you to us, sleeper. Peek smiles. But I'm very glad they did. That, that's an editing mistake a little bit. <laughs> I think that's a reasonable guess at least. New drive. Scan the cordon. I have a new drive now? Now? The objective just got more complicated. That's a little, that's, it's a good thing I took the stabilizer, I guess. Gonna finish things up with the reservoir. There we go. Not a single alert the entire time. 
Tucked into a service corridor deep below the reservoir, Asher's double-checking the seals on the water tanks loaded into the motorized trolley. Though you are far enough away from any thoroughfares not to, be, not to worry about being overheard, you both still speak in hushed tones. How will you get these to the briar? Ash glances back at you. We'll try these up a bay further along, and then we'll bring it to the briar for a quick and quiet collection. Speaking of quiet, she gives you a look, and then looks pointedly back down the corridor towards the reservoir before hitting the ignition on the trolley and to start it moving. You take the other side of the trolley and walk it up the wide service corridor with its flickering lights and Solheim detritus. You doubt it gets used by Havenich, at least that's the hope. You glance across at Esh, her face a mask of determination as she guides the trolley along. Maybe some conversation will make this journey go a little easier. How'd you meet Peek? Esh pauses, a little surprised by your question. She glances back down the tunnel, but in this deserted passage she can hardly keep up the pretense of silence. We grew up together. She answers quickly, and turns back to the trolley, but she can tell you're expecting her to add more. She seems to gather herself for an answer, not wanting to ignore you, but instead trying to get her answer straight in the head. Our outpost, Hawthorne, is not an easy place to grow up. The administrators keep a tight hold of everything. She rolls her eyes. Even though they are trapped in the same decaying installation as everyone else. Peak. She pauses. Peek found it harder than most. She pauses again, judging her words. I stepped in to help them out. Silence descends again, but you feel the wheels turning in Esh's mind as, as the creaking wheels of the trolley take you along the corridor. Peek isn't the most practical of people. They used to be, well... They need someone to teach them to look after themselves. Stand up for themselves. That was me. She smiles. After that, I couldn't get rid of them. Esh stops talking, but you see her eyes have lit up, and you imagine she's recalling some moment or other from her past, from her and Peak's past. You both reach a wide bulkhead doorway and have to stop from sh stop to shimmy the trolley over the edge. When you're done, Ash turns to you. I'm good from here. Head back. And with that, she's gone, moving off into the dark tunnel ahead. You watch her go, and then turn around and watch the walk the distance back to the staircase you entered from, the tunnel humming around you as you do. As you walk, you try to piece together Ash's past, but all you have are glimpses of a person she once was. She seems to prefer it that way. Probably want to re-roll these. Eh. Slightly better. Algae stack, algae stack. The algae stack is controlled by a small collective of farmers. If you want to use it, you'll need to persuade them. Please? Much to Esh's frustration, you have to pay or talk your way into the algae stack to farm food for the refugees. There's some progress. Oh, I got some energy. Come on, positive outcome. Yes! Objectives done in one, in one go. Oh. Oh, that was just getting access. Now I need to actually do it. Oh boy. This is a bit of a race. Making me a little bit nervous. We're one quarter out of time. So we're probably good. And I got some bonus energy. So I don't have to replenish that right now. I'm a little worried about my bonus tasks coming in. Or my other objectives, like Bliss. Yep. Sleeper. 
Moritz is leaning against the corridor wall. It's time. He looks away. Big Jom just came in. Grand finale. You up for it? I'm ready. Alright then. We're in business. He pushes away from the wall. This has to work, sleeper. Has to. He looks down. If it doesn't... Are we in trouble? The bay, you mean? He shrugs. We were already in trouble before you got here. The work so far hasn't been enough. Well, yeah, because we don't get paid for anything. Look. Bliss has had a rough time of it. I thought you of all people would understand that. He runs his hand through his hair. Sorry. Didn't mean to be. He, sm he smiles. Bliss is a good one. She gave me a chance. I owe her. He straightens up. I know you have your own things going on, sleeper. We all do. But the Bay needs someone. Bliss needs someone. Hell, I need someone to help me keep Bliss from spinning out completely. He scratches the side of his head. Otherwise, there's not, mu there's not much I can do. He shakes his head. And I would hate not to pay back my debts. More it stretches. I've got to get back. He nods. And walks away. I'm out. See you up there. We can harvest here again. We have a few competing tasks now. How big is this grand finale? It might be pretty big. What is the time limit? This seems like a lot. Man. <clears throat> the spur let's see, so... Solar window. The selected launch window for the Starward Vector's maiden voyage is closing. This is gonna be a tight one. Only six days, so I have to do it now. Rigged and ready. The Starward Vector's experimental sail deployed deployment failed horribly. Now its massive solar sails need to be repaired. Untangle the sails. The spurs need resetting and the system rebooting. But if you're careful and you, you can safely untangle huh. some of the sail while you're doing this. Patch solar sails, an exhausting task. Patching a solar sail means maintaining a laser focus for long periods of time. And time is something you don't have. This does two at a, two at a time, this does three at a time. But this one, if you are unsuccessful, you can make negative progress. Which is very bad, but I have sixes. Neutral outcome is still is still is still a good amount of positive. Okay, we're more than halfway there in one day. It's pretty good. The other one is both slower and cost me energy, which would hurt me right now. If I was gonna click, if I was gonna pick that one at all, I was gonna have to go eat first. But now I'll do it now. I gotta get this job as fast as. That's money. Gotta get this job done as fast as possible so I can go back to the refugees. Everybody depends on me, and nobody's paying me! Narratively, it's maybe a little absurd that I even can support myself right now. With everybody leaning on me. Less good rolls. If these re-roll poorly, I'll probably use them for something less impactful. Pfft. Wow, they re-rolled into ones, huh? 
All right, well, I'm almost there. One more good roll and the task is done. So I'll just try to use these somewhere lower risk. Somewhere where a one won't instantly kill me. The algae takes time to grow, and each cycle more can be harvested from the stack. Patience is required. So I think that... Oh, man. So I probably should start this one first. Food for the flotilla. Flotilla needs a lot of food to last. The quarantine ash will settle for nothing less than a full hand holds worth. So I need to try to get eight, and... Hmm. Shit. Did I run out the clock already? You can increase growth, though. But this could go very poorly. Ah, 50% negative is really bad. We've almost gotten that grown. I'm a little worried what that might add to my list of things. This one hurts me when I roll poorly. The ones might just generally fuck me. Although there's an enough positive. Okay. With enough bonus points, it could become something better. So, Cordon Intel. You and Peak need to get a sense of how the Havenage operation works before you can prepare your plan to slip through it. Blend in with the crew. One thing that, about being a sleeper is people always assume you're working, so blending in with the tug crew shouldn't be too tough. Or intercept comms. Cordon buzzes with radio transmissions and daily packets. Intercepting them will give you a good sense of how things are run here. This gives you less... But the consequences are lower, and I get a bigger bonus to the roll. Uh, I got plus energy from Thrill Seeker, though, so it negated the negative energy. That's really funny. Okay, well... I got something out of my shit roll. Kind of. Getting a little overwhelmed here, actually. <laughs> We're kind of spread thin in a distressing way. I'm a little nervous about how the next hour is going to play out. And there goes a dice. Huzzah, what's that? I don't have time for that right now. I gotta deal with other things. That's the seed. Let's finish this first. Before, before I let the seed creep into my life. You know, let's not allow for the chance of negative. The atmosphere in the airlock is euphoric. You and Bliss keep grinning at each other like idiots. Exhausted, blinded, sore and aching idiots. Sleeper, that was incredible! She punches you on the arm. I never thought we were going to make it. Those idiots tangled the whole thing up like, like nothing I've ever seen. We make a good team. Bliss smiles a winning smile. As the lock's inner door clunks open, Moritz gives a rare whoop. He looks exhausted, too, and for good reason. Moritz has been one of the of the one ferrying tools and, and parts back and forth from the ship. His tired smile tells you he's glad it's done. Sleeper. Bliss. He shakes his head. Impressive. When I saw that ship coming, I thought there was no way. Why, thank you, Moritz, she winks, for believing in us. Moritz rolls his eyes. You know what I mean. Take the compliment. He shoulders some of the gear that came back in with you and Bliss... That, ca that came in with you and Bliss and heads to the racks to stow it. Bliss turns to you. I think you should be the one to do the honors. She nods to the ragged-looking console that Moritz assembled. I don't want to jinx it. She smiles, but you can see she's genuinely nervous. Don't worry. I'll stop worrying when the chits are in my hands, and I'm giving them to a gimbal but bartender. You glide over to the console and check the screen. It takes a second to see what you are doing through the flickering crack display, but after a moment you see the accounts. And there it is. Almost a thousand cryo, sat in the bay's transfer account. Well, she calls, have we been screwed again? It's there. 
Bliss kicks off from the door <coughs> ah, and spins up into the bay, shouting as she does. The noise takes Moritz by surprise. He knocks a rack of parts, scattering handfuls of metal fixings across the bay. The sight is something, glinting steel catching the work lights like a glitter. Sorry, says Bliss, grinning, when she comes back down. I, I needed that. She kicks off and joins you at the terminal. Moritz even managed to sell that produce. Moritz even managed to sell that produce. We made a tidy profit. Eventually. She laughs. Here. She loads a stack of blank chits into the terminal and transfers a chunk of the cryo to them. This is your cut. Bliss hands you the chits. Thank you. For believing in this place. She looks away and smiles. Even when I couldn't. When we, when you first met me, I was on the, I was on the edge of giving up. All it would have taken was one more push. But now, now this place is sparking again. Work is coming in. There are funds in the accounts. Even Moritz has a spring in his step. You both look over at him, happily racking up tools. That's because of you. She punches you in the arm. He likes you. What's his deal? What, why is he always so quiet? She frowns. I'm not so sure. He doesn't much like to talk about himself, that one. She leans in closer. You know I came here looking, looking to rob the place? I gave him a job instead. She laughs. Don't tell him I told you that. I just thought it might help you understand the kid. Moritz turns to look at you, and both Bliss and you awkwardly wave. Maybe it's time to change the subject. You gonna be okay? Me? Always. She looks away. From here on, from here on out, it's going to be a little easier. I'm going to look for some component contracts, stuff that will keep us inside the bay, not out in the back, not out in the black. No need to risk our necks if we don't need to. You wanna cash out? That's fine. But there's always gonna be work here when you need it. I appreciate it. She smiles, and then, out of nowhere, quickly gives you a hug. She steps back and glances around, reflexively. Take care, she says, softly. You too. You turn to leave. And, sleeper? What? She smiles. Don't spend it all at once. I got 300, which is acceptable. <laughs> uh... One last job. Moritz heard Bliss speaking with somebody remotely. Is there another job coming in? A while from now, apparently. So for, oh, that's a decent job. You get 20 cryo each. That's the best pay I think I can get so far. But otherwise, we have six days until the next job, and so I'm going to ignore them for now. Because I have money. And I only, it only cost me 12 to eat. And I can't even spend money on my injections anymore. So one might say I'm feeling pretty stable. Okay, so let's please get some algae. Ooh, that's two for one. These better rolls? Okay, much better. Ah! Uh, I didn't get shit. Now we're out of algae growth. Okay, so I need five more of that. How are we doing on the time a limit? We're halfway there. Three, four, five, six. Okay, so we should be we should make it. We should do that fine. Just gotta keep an eye on it. Rico has something in her hands when you enter the lab. It looks like a knotted twist of woody stems. A ring about the circumference of a human head, consisting of a single stalk at one side and a branched woven network at the other. As you approach, she holds it up, and in the light of the lab it looks like a crown. 
Rico finishes her thought. She smiles and shakes her head in disbelief. Is that what grew? It is. It ca I came to the plant this morning, and this loop was all that was there. She points to a lump on the edge of the ring. The seed grew right back into itself, twisting up out of the soil. That being, that being you encountered, in the cloud, as you call it? Was it wearing one of these? She eyes you suspiciously, still unsure if this is somehow embroiled in an overlong prank. It doesn't work like that. She sighs. Perhaps wearing was the wrong word. She places the object on the bench and shuffles to her analysis terminal, her face lit by its amber light in the dim corner of the lab. Well, it isn't exactly a plant anyway, not from what I can tell. She gives you a serious look. No leaves, no chloroplasts, just a series of filaments encased in cellulose walls. How did it grow? It seems the seed contained everything it needed. A self-contained entity, n nothing less. She beckons you over. But that isn't the good part. Look at this. You see a cross-section scan of the crown. It's layers of plant-like structure on full view. Until you reach the center. There, instead of xylem and, f and, f and phloem for transporting nutrients, something branch and woven glints. Are those wires? She laughs. I'm not sure whether that whether to say yes or no here. These are not wires, like those in an electrical system, no. But they are filaments of a conductive material, so... Yes? She leans closer to the screen. But you see those branches. They remind me of dendrites, of neurons. She rubs her eyes. Which is frankly ridiculous. You look back at the crown on the table as Rico fusses over the scans, and you suddenly realize what you're, it reminds you of. You remember signing the forms. You remember signing the forms. The walks of the sleeper tanks, the cold metal floor. Then you remember the crown they fitted you with. A branching structure of wires and pads. No, not a crown. They called it an interface. The tool of your emulation. Your transference from neurons to electrons. An interface. That is your gift from the gardener. You turn back to Eriko. It's an interface. Eriko looks at you, puzzled. Something clicks in her mind. Perhaps something she heard from the sleeper she had helped all those cycles ago. She starts talking, partly to you, partly to herself. If the club heads were made for you, then this too could be for, made for you. For your frame. She shuffles over quickly to the interface, a word that has, that has stuck to this strange branch object quickly in your mind. You are right. That entity. It is the entity I have been looking for. She shuffles quickly to the crown. They are the entity which is controlling the Greenway. Which has been maintaining it. Supporting it. And has been guiding it for all these decades. She stops to catch her breath. They want to talk with you. Rico leads you to a seat. I will be here, sleeper. If something happens, if you wish me to remove the crown, the interface, just squeeze. She grips your hands tightly. You meet her eyes, clouded with age, but bright with the thrill of new discoveries. Then she places the interface on your head, and everything blinks out. Back into the river. Back into the dark flow. But something is different now. You are no longer pushed no longer blocked and buffeted by the swarm by the swarm by the storm instead it flows around you you move and it parts letting you pass something else resists but it gives easily enough you look back and see your body you have it, you have left it behind somewhere rico's voice is talking to you asking you questions it is excited eager Desperate to know what lies on the other side, what the entity has to say to you. You realize how long she has waited for this moment, for the moment of meeting between the inhabitants of the Greenway and its protector, 
and yet she is still on the outside. You shake off the sadness. You will be her, you will be her eyes. Then you see the figure, gardener, out in the storm, planting. It takes less than a moment to reach them. You have never felt so free. This is how the navigator must have felt, released from their prison. This, you think, is what it feels to be in the place you were built to inhabit. The gardener does not turn when you approach. They go, they go on planting, but their voice whispers in the, in the waters like a sharply rising current. You grew the gift. Their speech hisses around you. Good. I am glad. I wanted to meet you. Then we are the same. Both eager shoots seeking one another. How does it feel to be free of your seed? They stoop to plant again. My seed? That in which you were contained, from which you will grow. There was some disagreement, continues Gardner, as if you were picking up on a long-held conversation. With the others, they felt you were a danger. They were all they are always cautious, especially the fungi. They like old loam known they like old old loam as in they enjoy prefer not they are they comma like as in are similar to They like old loam known knowns wide and stable networks. The fungi were cautious mostly Yes, although there are many among their number who favor short growth cycles, thick nutrient veins, and sudden shifts. He gestures out into the storm, and though you cannot see them, you feel presences all around, sensing this audience with great interest. After all, they understood that it was I who made their, them their crowns. Without them, they would not have joined the chorus. So... They see that it is only fair that you get your chance to join, too. You made more crowns? I made them all. Gardener moves away a little, looking for a little planting spot. Another planting spot. It was so lonely here, but before long I found them and began to let them in. Gardener stoops again. We are millions, and we grow. I hope you understand. I am unused to speaking to your kind. It has been many cycles since my last conversation. I think it was the chief executive Trellick himself. You look around, and you see it. Every growing thing, every non-human being in the Greenway is here. They are networked. Connected, branched, and linked by this strange being, this artifact of the old station. The impossible dream of a senile farm a administration AI, a living network. You could dissolve here, you realize, free of that decaying body. You wouldn't need to be a person, why would you, among all these other minds? You turn away from Gardener for a moment, then look back at your body. A tiny, hairline thread connects it to you. You hear Rico's voice again, still asking, still checking in. Are you okay, sleeper? What are they saying, sleeper? Are you still there, sleeper? Something in you sighs a long sigh. A sigh that speaks of an exhaustion beyond tiredness. An exhaustion rooted deep inside you. It stems from the effort of answering questions, of answering problems, of getting up and breathing each cycle. But something else resists the sigh. A yearning, a sense of distance, a desire to squeeze that hand that holds you for its warmth, its blood, its complexity, to make a gesture that says, I'm still here, I'm still alive, I'm with you. The two ideas spin within you, making you nauseous. If you break that thread, you will be free. Free to dissolve here, to grow strange and beautiful among the others, a million others. If you follow it, if you squeeze Rico's hand, you will wake up, back in that dying body, with all the pain and warmth that entails. 
Now is the moment to choose. Whoa! Abrupt? Not even an introduction or like time to like, you didn't have no like task you have to do after meeting him or anything. It's like straight to like, hey, you want to uh, die kind of? Would you like to be copied over into a computer mycelium network thing forever? Damn. <laughs> I think I would never do this because there's a few different, there's a few issues. One, there's the transporter problem, which extends to AI, which is the fact that, like, in order to get into a computer or whatever, you have to be copied, and then the original thing deleted. So, like, you aren't the same, it isn't the same continuous entity. There's a question of whether or not that even applies directly to an AI that an AI moving, because we're essentially kind of an AI? It's actually a little hard, we're a little ha hazy on the exact inner workings of a sleeper. But uh, if you're a human mind, and you get copied into a computer, that is very clearly not the same person. Uh, that is an, uh, a code approximation of a consciousness that once existed. Rather notably, it's the simple fact that you can't, like, transfer your consciousness to a computer like move from your body to a, a computer the computer is always going to be emulating or recreating you made made obvious by the fact that you could you could continue to exist afterwards independently so it's just it's just not you and that is heavily le le leaned into by this game because of the fact that we are an e that's that's the story of this game we're an emulated consciousness and uh the, the the actual person's still out there. But I don't know if that applies here so much. But uh, but I will say that just as a human being, ignoring that entire problem, just individuality and, pr like, agency and the ability to do things and exist in your own way is just, like, kind of a priority. There's a... a there's something terrifying about losing... yourself in many ways, but also the fact that your your fate is now tied to the station, and it always feels like the station's on the verge of something horrible happening beyond the control of the gardener, so how long is this, maybe, this seemingly eternal life as part of the station? Uh, and we just don't have the strongest sense of that we'll be happy or anything else. It's really hard to make sense of, like, what this existence would be like because of how kind of abrupt this was presented but there is a sense that like you you could rest at long last because yeah the sleeper has an exhausting time just always fighting for survival and arguably by the nature of video games honestly for the sake of variety and so on not having just a clear day-to-day -day job to do all the time although i could uh but that's not what the gameplay largely persists of He's had, he's had to fend off so many different things. And it'd be good to take a break. And just rest. Especially since uh, the sleeper's body is designed to fail. And all the stabilizer in the world, it seems, isn't going to stop that from happening eventually. As noted at, by the uh, ending. Uh, the first ending we got. But anyway, I think I'm going to do the ending and then come back again. That seems like the reasonable thing to do. Let's see it. Break the thread. You reach down and pinch the thread. The finality of this moment descends on you. Break it. You pluck the thread like a string. It snaps. Nothing changes. You stand at a point of stillness. No. You don't stand. You have no legs, no body. You are a point of stillness. A point in the flow. Your mind fizzes. A thousand new shoots break through the soil. They entwine with you, embrace you. Some part of you decays while something else feeds from that decay. The spores of your, of your new thoughts float away in shifting clouds and settle in new soil. As you see Gardener out there, still planting, uh, then you see Gardener out there, still planting, and they stop, like an old man resting in the fields, and they turn to face you. And you join the chorus. 
and together you sing the song of growing things. And so we join it. <laughs>